OpenAI is experimenting with Anthropic's skill standard. Can it make AI agents work better? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we're getting a little bit more technical than we normally do, but there's a reason for that. One of the big themes of 2025 was supposed to be AI agents. And while I would argue that that came true, it was a little bit more nuanced than I think people thought it would be going into it. I believe that the expectation was that we would see agents proliferate across the enterprise. Instead, what we got was one, coding agents becoming the most important breakout category in AI writ large, and two, a lot of infrastructure and standards type work around how we build agents that set us up for that sort of maturity and proliferation in the years to come. Now, around that, one of the things that's been interesting is to see how companies, even very fiercely competitive companies in the space, have frequently decided over the course of the last year to adopt each other's standards rather than trying to compete around standards. We saw this, of course, with MCP, which became a standard way adopted by Google and OpenAI and Microsoft, even though it originated with Anthropic, to allow LLMs and AI applications to access outside information. And now it appears that something similar might be happening with skills. At the end of last week, a number of folks on Twitter slash X, including Simon Willison, noticed that Anthropic's skills mechanism was starting to show up in the OpenAI ecosystem. So let's talk about what skills are and why this could be a big deal. Back in October, Anthropic introduced agent skills, which they called a new way to build specialized agents using files and folders. And at core, files and folders are what skills are. Specifically, Anthropic writes that skills are organized folders of instructions, scripts, and resources that agents can discover and load dynamically to perform better at specific tasks. The goal is to allow general purpose agents to become specialized agents in the context of the work that they're doing at the time. And in many ways, when Anthropic introduced this, that seemed to be the goal. Instead of developers having to build this complicated, balkanized, and fragmented landscape of custom-designed agents for every single different use case, by making capabilities and knowledge composable and accessible on demand, a much less fragmented landscape of generalized agents could access those capabilities and knowledge when needed to become specialized agents. A skill is basically a folder or a directory that contains a file called skill.md. In other words, a markdown file. That file has a name, a description, and instructions. When an agent that has access to skills starts up, it loads the names and descriptions of all installed skills into its systems prompt. And then when a relevant task comes up, Claude can read the full instructions. This is what Anthropic calls progressive disclosure. Claude only loads context when it needs it. In other words, Claude doesn't have to waste a bunch of time loading up all the instructions in each skill. It can just sort through that name and description metadata to figure out which skills it should be accessing for a particular task. So layer one of progressive disclosure is that basic metadata of a name and a description. The second layer of detail is the actual body of the file with instructions, procedural knowledge, context, whatever it may be. If there is even additional content, that can also be bundled underneath, leading to a third level of progressive disclosure. In that announcement, Post Anthropic wrote, As skills grow in complexity, they may contain too much context to fit into a single skill.md or context that's relevant only in specific scenarios. In these cases, skills can bundle additional files within the skill directory and reference them by name from skill.md. These additional linked files are the third level and beyond of detail, which Claude can choose to navigate and discover only as needed. In the example they give, which is a comprehensive PDF toolkit for extracting text and tables, the second layer overview includes a line for advanced features, JavaScript libraries, and detailed examples, see reference.md, and if you need to fill out a PDF form, read forms.md and follow its instructions. This is that bundling of additional content. So like I said, sometimes skills are going to include procedural knowledge, sometimes they're going to include background and context, sometimes they're going to include code. For example, instead of Claude generating code to extract PDF form fields, a skill might include a Python script that does it reliably. So there are a bunch of theoretical benefits of this system. Skill files are markdown files, meaning that anyone can write them. This allows for customization without engineering. If you can write instructions for a human, you can write instructions that become part of a skill. The second benefit is efficiency. Progressive disclosure means that context is only loaded when it's needed so that the user isn't burning tokens on irrelevant instructions. There's the composability benefit and the fact that skills stack. You can have multiple skills working together instead of building single purpose agents. There's reliability. We just mentioned that coding example and skills can include code that runs deterministically instead of it being regenerated every single time. And finally, there's portability. Institutional knowledge gets captured in a format that persists and can be transferred, meaning that new users or agents can access it immediately. 
So basically, if the model context protocol is an open standard for allowing LLMs to connect to external tools and data sources in a uniform way, skills are a standard for specialized instructions and context that allow LLMs or agents to perform specialized tasks without the user having to re-explain the process every time. Now, when skills came out, there was a lot of excitement about them. AI engineering thought leader Simon Willison, for example, wrote a post called Claude Skills Are Awesome, Maybe a Bigger Deal Than MCP. Now, Simon's core argument comes down to efficiency and simplicity. Back in October, he wrote, Model Context Protocol has attracted an enormous amount of buzz since its initial release back in November last year. Over time, the limitations of MCP have started to emerge. The most significant is in terms of token usage. GitHub's official MCP on its own famously consumes tens of thousands of tokens of context. And once you've added a few more to that, there's precious little space left for the LLM to actually do useful work. Simon continued, My own interest in MCPs has waned ever since I started taking coding agents seriously. Almost everything I might achieve with an MCP can be handled by a CLI or command line interface instead. LLMs know how to call CLI tool help, which means you don't have to spend many tokens describing how to use them. The model can figure it out later when it needs to. Skills have the exact same advantage, only now I don't even need to implement a new CLI tool. I could drop a markdown file in describing how to do a task efficiently, adding extra scripts only if they'll make things more reliable or efficient. Now, trying to simplify this as much as possible, basically what Simon is saying is that with MCP, you have to build something for Claude to use a tool. With a CLI, Claude can just use tools that already exist. But with skills, Claude can just read instructions you wrote and figure it out. And indeed to Simon, as he puts it, the simplicity is the point. He writes, one of the most exciting things about skills is how easy they are to share. I expect many skills will be implemented as a single file. More sophisticated ones will be a folder with a few more. Something I love about the design of skills is that there is nothing at all preventing them from being used with other models. You can grab a skills folder right now, point Codex CLI or Gemini CLI at it, and say read PDF slash skill MD, and then create me a PDF describing this project, and it will work, despite those tools and models having no baked in knowledge of the skills system. I expect we'll see a Cambrian explosion of skills which will make this year's MCP rush look pedestrian by comparison. The core simplicity of the skills design is why I'm so excited about it. Now, in retrospect, that looks a little prophetic. Sean Wang Swix wrote, I was skeptical when Simon Willison said that Claude's skills are awesome, maybe a bigger deal than MCP, but early indications are this is correct. He then shared a talk from the recent AI Engineer Code Summit, which he said is the fastest talk to ever pass 100,000 views on the AI Engineer channel. The talk, by the way, was about why we should stop building agents and start building skills. The problem they identified was intelligent agents lack expertise. Genius without experience, as they put it. The solution is a new architecture with skills. A skill, they say, is an expert in a folder. And the new app store for AI are the skills that they can access. The old way, then, are monolithic agents that have a separate agent for each domain, hard-coded or prompted in context, and which doesn't improve over time. While the new way, agents plus skills, are a general agent with many skills packaged in simple reusable folders that enable continuous and tangible learning. Then at the end of last week, people started to notice skills showing up in the OpenAI ecosystem. AI Techie Arun writes, OpenAI just quietly stole Anthropic's homework and it's brilliant. OpenAI integrated Anthropic's skills mechanism into ChatGPT and Codex, allowing the models to dynamically manage files like spreadsheets and PDFs. This modular approach to agent capabilities is proving to be a foundational piece of next-gen LLMs. Simon Willison also picked up on this. On Friday, he wrote, OpenAI aren't talking about it yet, but it turns out they've adopted Anthropic's brilliant skills mechanism in a big way. Skills are now live in both ChatGPT and their Codex CLI tool. This was confirmed a couple days later by Thibaut at OpenAI, who wrote, We've added experimental support for skills and it combines well with GPT-5 too. Already seeing some cool things in the wild that leverage skills in Codex. I think about skills as an extension of agents.md with progressive disclosure. By the way, Agents.md was OpenAI's lightweight markdown standard for providing AI coding agents specifically with project-specific instructions. So thinking in a similar domain. Now, in Simon's new post, he wrote, One of the things that most excited me about Anthropic's new skills mechanism back in October is how easy it looked for other platforms to implement. A skill is just a folder with a markdown file and some optional extra resources and scripts, so any LLM with the ability to navigate and read from a file system should be capable of using them. It turns out OpenAI are doing exactly that, with skills support quietly showing up in both their Codex CLI tool and now also in ChatGPT itself. Now, so far, people are just starting to experiment and figure out how they work in OpenAI. But as Simon summed up, when I first wrote about skills in October, I said they're awesome, maybe a bigger deal than MCP. The fact that it's just turned December and OpenAI have already leaned into them in a big way reinforces to me I called that one correctly. Hold aside Simon's good call. This to me is continued evidence 
that it matters way more to these foundation lab companies to move at the speed of development than to own the standard. Kishan wrote, OpenAI seems comfortable to let Anthropic create standards like MCP and skills, then adopt them later. Skills are wonderfully simple, and I wish all the CLI agents adopt the pattern. Look, even though 2025 was a big year for agents in a lot of ways, it's still very clear that we are so barely scratching the surface of what's possible. And one of the things that will accelerate us heading into 2026 is the common adoption of these mutual standards. So super interesting stuff. Excited to see what people go build with this. For now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.